Hi everyone, it's Katie Wardrobe from Midnight Music here and I'm glad to have some people joining me for my first Facebook Live session. I'm going to get started in a few minutes. My session today is about tips for using technology in music classes when you don't know where to start. And I'll get started in a few minutes. I'm going to give a few people uh, some time to get on and I hope that we'll have a few people joining us live. And I'll get started with the teaching stuff properly uh, in just a little while. And if you're watching live, maybe you can just type a comment in, let me know where you're watching from. And maybe if you're a teacher, what you teach. I'm looking forward to this session today. I've just had uh, my internet upgraded recently and up until now I really haven't been able to do any live sessions because my internet connection has been so bad. So it's really good now. I've uh, got a really strong connection and we're having our system improved in Australia so lots of people are getting their, their uh, NBN, it's called, rolled out and it's just come to my area recently so I'm super happy that I'm able to do things like this now and get live sessions going and live webinars and, and so on. Let me know where you're from. There's a little bit of a delay with the comments as they come through. So I'll try and answer some questions if you've got them as well and you want to add those in to the comments box there. It's all a bit new for me this. I'm just trying to work out where I'm seeing things, but uh, I can see we've got a few people on, which is great. Been seeing lots of questions on Facebook recently about what to do with technology and people have got new devices that they're going to use. And so I thought I'd answer a few of those questions here live today. How are we going for time? We've got a couple of minutes still till 10 o'clock. I'm going to start properly at 10 o'clock. Just if you just joined us, type in the comments box, let me know where you're watching from. It's Monique. Hello, Monique from Christchurch. Excellent. Uh, teaching in a home studio and you've got three students. Excellent. Have you just started teaching, Monique? Building up your students at the moment. I'd love to know if everyone can hear me okay as well. I've got my microphone plugged in at the moment and when I was doing some testing this seemed to be the best option so uh, it's on a, a boom arm as you can tell and some, sometimes the boom arm has a mind of its own and it kind of starts to drift into a different position so hopefully that won't happen today. <laughs> if you've just joined us I'm going to get started officially in a couple of minutes with some tips for using technology in music classes when you don't know when where to start. And I'm just going to give a couple of minutes for people to join in. Hello, Sally. Thanks for joining us. Thumbs up to you too. <laughs> Let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know. It's a good time for people in the States at this time of day because uh, it's in the evening and that's a great Facebook time. And I know a lot of teachers here in Australia are at school, so not really able to join us live, but hopefully they'll catch up with the video recording a bit later on. All right, I think we've hit 10 o'clock, so I'm going to get started with my tips. I'll share a few tips and I've got about, uh, let me see, I'm just checking my notes here. I've got about eight tips to share today. And I'll probably stop, I'll do some of them and then I'll stop halfway through and take some questions and check the comments at that time. And then I'll stop again at the end and we can have a bit more of a chat. And if there's more questions, then I will answer them at that time. Janet's joined us from North Dakota. Thanks, Janet. Yeah, starting school on Thursday. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so a lot of people in the States have either just gone back or are about to go back. I know a few people are still enjoying summer holidays over there. We're in the middle of winter here in Melbourne where I am, so I'm a bit jealous of all your nice weather over there. And the solar eclipse that you got to watch yesterday too, or last night for us here. All right, let me get started with a few tips. So I, I've been seeing lots of questions on Facebook recently. In There's a couple of groups that I'm in, um, the Very Big Music Teachers group, which has about 20,000 people and even more than that, I think now, and in a couple of other groups that I'm in. And lots of the questions have been around 
um, things like I've just been given a set of iPads or I've just discovered I've got Chromebooks which I can use in the new school year or maybe you're halfway through the school year if you're here in Australia and still kind of wondering what are some of the things that you can do in the classroom with music technology and, and how to incorporate it in what you're doing. So I thought I'd share a few tips today and the first thing I'm going to say is really it's great to work out what you want to teach first. So the technology needs to come second really. It's, it's about thinking about what you want to teach and then working out where the technology can fit in with that and enhance what you do or help you in some way or make your life a little bit easier or more productive. And you know, it's not really about which apps to use and which software. It's really about what you want to teach and whether the technology as a tool can fit into that. Um, my philosophy is if it doesn't help, don't use it. <laughs> and that comes from me as a, a technology person, someone who uses technology a lot. But really, there's often a better, if there is a better way to use, uh, to teach something without the technology, then by all means, um, don't try and sort of force it in there. But having said that, there's so many cool things that you can do. And sometimes it's a case of just uh, having an idea about what other people are doing or just a few ideas for the ways that you can incorporate technology. And it kind of opens up the possibilities a little bit and can, can help you out there. So that's the first tip, work out what you want to teach first. And the second thing that I'll say is that I like the idea of interweaving technology into what you do. So it becomes one part of a lesson, for instance. Um, this works great if you've got some devices you can use in the classroom, whether it's just your own personal laptop as a teacher, or maybe if you've got some devices that students can use, you might do some sort of singing and playing first of all, and then you might follow up with an activity that involves technology somehow after that. It's great to sort of interweave it in and then it does truly become just a tool that you can use to teach whatever it is that you're teaching. The next few tips I wanna share are to do with how you can actually use the technology in the music classroom and the ways in which you can use it. I'm going to share a few different ways that I, I use technology for teaching music and that I know other teachers are doing as well. And the first one is my favourite one and this is to use technology to be creative. There's lots of ways that you can use tech for this and this is things like um, basically using technology to compose or to arrange or remix songs and there are some fantastic uh, interactive websites which are free which will help you do this. Lots of fantastic paid software as well. So free websites that I love for creating and composing in a musical sense are things like Incredibox, some of you might have used that before, fantastic um, kind of beatboxing style website and there's lots and lots of things you can do there which are really interactive and you can use it to teach or enhance or reinforce concepts that you're already doing with students. Um, Groove Pizza is another one. I don't know if any of you have used Groove Pizza before, but it's an online drum sequencer tool in a circular format and really super easy to use. You can create some fantastic drum patterns there and then do lots of things with that drum pattern afterwards. Um, so that's another one of my favorite ones. Paid software, uh, that you might have access to for composing and arranging might include things like GarageBand on the iPad. That's a fantastic tool. If that's the only app you had on iPads, you'd be in a, still in a great position. There's so much you can do with GarageBand. Um, if you haven't got iPads or a Mac computer, which would also have GarageBand on it, you can also use uh, free things like um, Actually not free, Soundtrap. Well, Soundtrap is free. There's a certain aspect of the account that you can have for free, but then you can actually use a paid, uh, paid access for Soundtrap too. But Soundtrap's essentially like an online version of GarageBand and it allows you to record students. You can use loops from the loop library to build up some kind of pattern there. Uh, students can record voice or instruments over the top. It's a very collaborative tool. So you can have actually students from different locations all logging into the one uh, the one project and, and collaborating in that way, even from different countries collaborating together to create and compose. Soundtrap's also great even for verbal um, kind of like podcast style assessment projects where students might create a, a verbal assignment and that could be like a, a history project where they're talking about a composer 
and they might record an assignment about that rather than doing a written essay or written assignment. Great way to, to do that. Soundtrap and GarageBand are two of the options that are what we would call digital audio workstations, but there's lots and lots of other ones too. Studio One, there's Logic, there's Pro Tools, um, there's Cubase, Ableton Live, there's so many different options there. And all of those tools are fantastic for creating and composing. Um, one of the apps on the iPad that I love for creativity, and it's in a performing sense, sort of improvisation and um, performing and so on is called Loopy HD and you get to do live looping with your iPad where you can sing or play and create layers and layers of music over the top. You might have seen that one used a little bit if you ever watch the Jimmy Fallon show, Tonight Show. He's used that app a lot of times. Um, I think first of all was with Billy Joel and they did a version of The Lion Sleeps Tonight. But he's used it a number of times since with Queen Latifah and Will Smith, I think, as well, and a number of other people. So um, Loopy is a great one for students to improvise and create with too. The fourth way that you can use technology is to use it to notate compositions and notation software. In the past, there was really only, um, you know, I'm talking years ago now, there was only a couple of options for, for music notation. Nowadays, though, we have so many options. There's so many different things that you can do with notation and ways that you can use it. So there are online versions of notation software like um, Noteflight and flat.io, great options if you've got Chromebooks, you can use both of those. And there's um, the sort of the more standard ones that have been around for some time like Sibelius and Finale, which are great. Um, the new one called Dorico as well. And I'm probably forgetting a number of other ones. MuseScore is a fantastic free notation software option. And all of those allow students to compose and create um, with the notation and it makes it great for them to be able to see their work in a printed format. So you can create a, a proper looking score and even really young students can do this. Works great on iPad too. There are even some handwriting notation options for iPad and tablets that you can use nowadays, which just make it really fun. And I think students get that great sense of uh, creating something that looks like a published score. So it's another great way to, to use notation and technology. I'm going to pause for a minute and check some comments. I've got a few more tips to share in terms of how you can use technology in Music Classroom. And I'm just going back through. We've got Michael watching from Seattle, Tacoma area. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Another one in a warm place, I'm sure. I can see Michelle, Leslie and Kat. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> And it's great to have some people live. Thanks for joining me. This is my very first live session, so it's kind of exciting. I'm going to do some more actually in the next few days and um, talk, talk about more specific ways to use technology in the music classroom and share some actual lesson ideas and um, even some free resources that you can use, which is great. Hi, Barb. Barb's joined as well. Thanks, Barb. It's nice to see you. All these lovely people I get to see virtually most of the time. I'm looking forward to catching up in person with some people next year at the Texas Music Educators Conference, which is on in February. I'm going to get there this time around, I've, I've decided. <laughs> Let me share a few more tips. So I've got um, the next way to use technology, which is a great option, is to capture students' thinking in some way. And by this, I mean, you know, creating assignments which are in a digital format. This could be as simple as using Microsoft Word or Google Docs, particularly if you want to do collaborative stuff, that works really well. Um, but even better sometimes is to use things which allow you to incorporate multimedia of some sort. So if you can find a type of software program that will allow you to include audio files and video files and images along with text, it makes it much more interesting, interactive for students and it's a great way for them to present learning. So like I said, that could be just uh, Google Docs. There's also um, Google Slides, of course, which you can use uh, if you're using particularly Google Classroom online. And you can use some other great things. Even PowerPoint is really, really good for uh, creating sort of multimedia presentations for students to demonstrate their learning. 
Um, a couple of other tools that I love for this purpose, uh, one that I've been using only recently, and I'm not, I'm not really sure why it took me so long to kind of get onto it in a, a big way, uh, which is called Padlet. And it used to be called Wallwisher, I think, a few years ago, but it's called Padlet now. And it's a fantastic online, um, how would you describe it? Like an online bulletin board almost, or, or notice board or pin board. And it's a place where you can upload snippets of text, and you can uh, share videos there and students can collect information about a particular topic. It's super collaborative. It's really easy for students to all contribute to the one Padlet board. And you could do things like set up a board where um, students are contributing information about a specific composer or artist. They could create one for themselves about their favourite musical things and they could collect things on there like uh, links to YouTube videos and uh, links to articles that they've found and they can write some of their own text from scratch and they can put it all in one place in Padlet and it's uh, really great and easy to use. I've been using it also to share links in workshops that I'm running. So I've created Padlet boards where people have been able to contribute through the workshop. So every time one of us mentions some kind of uh, link or interesting website, we just add a link to it on the Padlet board and it becomes really easy to access afterwards. Um, if you've got um, iPads in to access in the music classroom, uh, the, the app called Explain Everything is also a fantastic one for students to use to create multimedia presentations. Explain Everything's a little bit like PowerPoint or Keynote if you're on a Mac. Uh, but it's a little bit more interesting. It allows you to record your screen. You can uh, press record and draw on a whiteboard screen. You can also add in pictures and video and um, audio files and so on. And it becomes a great way to create like a digital portfolio around a specific topic. So that's one of my favorite apps on the iPad too. Three more tips for the ways that you can use technology in music education. So number six is recording students, just plain and simple recording. And you can do this in lots of ways, depending on whatever device you've, you've got access to. Uh, if you've got um, iPads or smartphones, they've got the inbuilt camera, just uh, flicking on record and using that to either record video or even just simply audio, using the Voice Memo app is a really simple way just to record and capture students learning. Students can do this themselves if you've got access to multiple devices and you can just hit record and they can capture whatever it is that they've been doing in the classroom. A great thing that you can do at the end of class if, if students have been working on something is that they can uh, get up in front of the class and share it with the room and you could sit there and record what they're doing as a like a performance even if it's not a musical performance it might be a straight up presentation and they could just have it recorded by you and that gets captured and then that can be added to a digital portfolio as well. If you're using Chromebooks or laptops as well, that's also um, tools, of course, you can also do recording on. If you've got a camera of some sort, that's a great way to capture recording there. And of course, you can just do simple audio recording too. Even if you download and use uh, the free software Audacity, you can just hit record and capture students that way too. Recording. Um, as well as students, having students recorded in terms of what they're doing, you can actually record yourself. You can do some recording of your own, uh, which will create, uh, you, you can use to create tutorial videos or tutorial audio files that students can listen to anytime. So this is sort of heading into that flipped classroom idea where you can create some tutorial videos which students can use outside of class time and use them all inside of class time but independently. That can be a great way to free up your time as a teacher. So if you want to kind of, you know, split your um, your attention across a few different groups of students, basically you could have some pre-done tutorial videos which students can access during class time. And that frees you up to then go and help other students which might be working on something completely different. It's a great thing to do if you know you're going to be out of class for a while and you've got maybe a substitute teacher filling in, if you've got access to some tutorial videos that you've created or that someone else has created, uh, you could get them to use those in the classes when you're away. 
Tip number seven is to use technology for drills and learning. So computer assisted instruction, it used to be called. I haven't really heard that term used much recently, but um, that's a great way to use technology. This is where technology really excels, is uh, kind of drilling students on things that are I don't know, maybe, you know, not so fun for you to do all the time in terms of getting exercises, um, running through exercises with students. So with this in mind, I'm thinking things like note, note naming, so naming notes of the staff. Uh, there's some fantastic software options and free interactive websites which will allow you to uh, get students to practice learning the notes of the staff. Things like Staff Wars, which has been around for a long time, is a fantastic free software program that you can download. There's also an iPad app version as well. Um, there are lots of other ones. In terms of iPad apps, there's another one called Flashnote Derby, which is also great. And there are some online options like at musictheory.net. There's some online options there too, which I love as well. And my last tip for using technology is to use it for assessment purposes. And again, technology really excels at this because if you can set up some kind of quiz in an online tool or a quiz, like a quiz tool, Basically, you don't have to assess the students yourself. The tool will do the marking for you. So this is brilliant. It saves you some time in the classroom. Things like Kahoot, some of you may have used, or Quizlet or Socrative and Plickers. They're all some great online tools. I think all, all of those ones that I've just mentioned are free. So they're fantastic ones to use. And you can set up a quiz ahead of time. Students can do that quiz either in class time and some of them work quite well independently too. And then the app will actually gather the results for you. It will gather the assessment uh, for you and tell you what the students have without you having to mark, mark them yourself. So that's my last tip. I'm going to check the comments and see if there are any more questions there. But um, one of the frequently asked questions I will just mention is that there is often a, a sense that you need to have access to two devices for multiple students in your class at once um, in order to use it um, effectively. And I don't really think that's the case. I think that there are many, many things that you can do, even if you've just got a single computer in the classroom. And as long as you can attach that to your data projector and speakers, you can do lots of stuff with the class as a group. And I've been sharing some tips along those lines for some time now, but then, you know, if you've got devices that students can use, you can also follow up and get them to do some smaller group activities or individual activities as well. If you've only got a few devices for students to use, then you can do things like get them to work in groups or use the devices in stations or centres. I know some of you, particularly in the States, um, a lot of people are using stations or centres where there's like rotational activities set up in the classroom. And the te a technology station might be just one of the, the ones in the classroom. Maybe some of the other ones involve playing or literacy activities. But the tech station might just have a single laptop or maybe, maybe two or three iPads there. And the students can get there and do some technology activities there. So you really don't have to have one per student. Of course, it opens up a few more possibilities if you do, but some small group activities work really well too. I'm gonna to check the comments here and see what else has happened since I've been sharing those tips. Uh, Michael's asked, what's the best software to use to convert your iPad into an interactive whiteboard for notation writing pra practice, as in practice the drawing of music notation symbols? Um, Michael, I like explain everything for that. If you just want kind of like a white background and then you're going to hand draw with your finger, say a treble clef and so on, explain everything works really well like that. So as long as you can open up explain everything, and uh, show it on your data projector, that's a really great way. I've done that before and it's, it's worked really well. Um, the tip that I'll give you is that explain everything is basically, it's kind of like PowerPoint. So when you open it up, it's got a white slide there and you can add anything you like to it. So if you want to demonstrate the drawing of clefts or note, note heads and so on, um, and things like, you know, where the stems are going up or stems are going down. Um, it's really good to import an image of a, a stave that you can work on. Otherwise, you have to draw physically five lines with your finger and that's really annoying and time consuming. So 
Um, import an image of a stave and you can fix it in place and then you can draw on top of that. And this, it's really cool because the students can actually see the shape being formed and you can record yourself doing that. That could be a tutorial video that you make or you can demonstrate it live if your iPad's attached to the data projector, it works really well. And then if you've got access to student devices too, that's something they could do themselves, they can follow up with it. Um, and the great thing about Explain Everything is that you can get the students to press record and when they're drawing their treble clef or whatever it is, um, the recording will show their their handwriting in the, you know, sort of live as if they're doing it live. So you can actually see how they're forming the shape of the treble clef as the example and it will give you tips on you know whether they're attacking it the right way <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, yeah so that works really well. If any of you have an interactive whiteboard that's uh, and you've got the interactive whiteboard software that's also something you can do on there just draw freely on the screen and show show the uh, the sort of the direction of the clef and, and how you draw that or whatever it is. I'm, I'm using treble clef as the example but yeah that's a great a great thing to do. So I love that. Hopefully that, that's what you were heading for. John says, thank you. Thank you, John. That's great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Travis, hi Travis. Travis says, can you talk about sequencing programs that you use with students recording, film scoring, video game composition? Yep, great question. Um, yeah, there's so many, so many. Oh, sequencing projects, not software. Sorry, I was going to answer about software. Yeah, sequencing projects. Yes, all of those. Uh, the film scoring and video game composition are really, really popular with students and with teachers that I do training. I do lots of teacher training workshops and they are probably the two most popular ones that I do really in terms of that. Um, other than those two, they are other things you can do. It's just uh, straight up songwriting and composition activities. And they don't have to be massive projects. They can be really small projects. So you might just set like a, a four bar, four measure composition where students are working, you know, with some, um, you could even set some chords for those four bars or four bar chord sequence and then get them to compose over the top of that. So just simple songwriting exercises which then may lead on into something a bit bigger, so a longer project. Um, working in number of measures is kind of a good way to start I reckon, you know, just a, a defined eight measure project and then that might head in later on with older students to a longer thing where they've got song sections where they're doing a chorus and a verse and so on. But yeah, um, songwriting is great. The film scoring stuff I love because it incorporates so many different aspects of technology. So you're working with um, creating mood music You're from a musical point of view. Um, from a form point of view, uh, you can get students to compose quite freely in, in film scoring because, you know, you're sort of just matching whatever's going on in the action on the screen and, and that works really well. From a tech point of view, film scoring teaches so many skills like multi-track recording and matching sound and um, visuals together, so synchronising sound and visuals. Uh, I love to start off with just sound effects as a basic uh, starting place which teaches students the tech skills before they get into the more complex uh, musical composition skills. So I usually start with that first of all and then in head into a more complex project after that. Um, and video game composition, same kind of thing. It's quite quite similar in a way to film scoring in that you know you can start off quite simply. There's a great website that I use as a starter activity called Beepbox, B -E -E -P -B -O -X, Beepbox, and that makes this really cool Mario style video game themes on there. Great place to start and then head into something a bit more fully featured like GarageBand or Mixcraft or um, Soundtrack or something after that to do a more fully fledged project. So yeah, so that that's some of my favourite things. Other things that I like to do, are just storytelling is also a great leading activity to film scoring and video game composition. So getting students to record a story, add their own sound effects and maybe some just intro and outro music or even just some background music can be a great a great project to start with too. Lots of other things, many, many other things. Um, could talk for hours about those ideas. That's my favourite area really, is doing those compositional type um, creative activities. Um, so much fun and, and that's the thing that, that students really love. There's lots of other things you can do. You know, if you're getting into Ableton Live and performing 
as well as uh, recording, you know, straight up recording. That's a, a great area to get into. Lots of teachers I know are doing that now as well. So I am really happy that we had this session today and that it's kind of worked from a tech point of view. It's always, uh, you know, hard when it's a brand new thing. So it seems to have worked okay. Sounds been good, all of that sort of thing. And thank you for joining me live if you did. I'm, I'm going to do a few more of these sessions uh, probably in the next few days. I'm planning to do one around the same time tomorrow. And I'm going to talk more specifics in the sessions in the rest of the week. So tomorrow's session is going to be about my top five favourite free interactive music websites for creative activities. So I'm going to talk about which ones they are and the sorts of things I like to use them for. And then later in the week, I'll do some other specific sessions, which I'll, um, you know, I'll share with you as I go along and I'll let you know what time they'll be on. Today's one was a US friendly time and so will tomorrow's one be a US friendly time. But I'll, I'll do one, I think, on Thursday, which will be more Australian friendly for teachers who are, you know, at school at the moment. And I'll, I'll do one which is maybe around eight o'clock at night for us here, which won't be so good for those of you who are in the States but you can catch up with the recording afterwards. And if you want some more information after today's session, I've got an, my online community is the place where I've got lots of professional development courses and lesson plans. So specifically lesson plans about this type of thing, about the ideas that you can do with students. Um, I've got a series of free, not free, of, of lesson plans which use free websites in there at the moment, which I'm just building up. I've got the first eight in there and I'm planning to get up to about 25 or 30 of those. And and it's really fun. I've been really looking forward to getting these going and I'm so happy that some of them are done already. So if you're interested in finding out more about the community, there's a special offer going on at the moment, which is kind of to celebrate the back to school season for the people in the States. And the link for that is midnightmusic.com.au forward slash simple music tech. So if you want to check that out, I'd love you to do that. And I know some of you are already in the community. So thanks for joining me live today. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Monique. Great. Yeah, Monique said she's always trying to think of engaging, ways to engage the boys. Yes. Yeah, the, oh my gosh, the video game soundtrack is so good for the boys. Um, I've had a couple of teachers do that, people who have been in my community, and they've reported back, particularly the boys have gotten into it. And um, one teacher in the States, Janice, who is fabulous, she's been doing some great things with her students. She came back to me and, um, you know, I had shared a lesson plan, you know, and the way that I do it. And basically with some, uh, one of the things is to create some epic battle music. So this is the lesson plan. And so she went and did this with her students. And she said it was hilarious because in, I think, the first lesson when they started to do this epic battle music project that, that she was doing with them, the, the thing that they wanted to do uh, was to know what was the game that they were composing for. That was one of the questions. So rather than just, you know, it, it's a general epil, epic battle theme for some game, which is kind of what I was thinking, they wanted to know exactly what was going on in the game that they were composing for, which I thought was really cool. And she said the other thing that they really wanted to do was to share their own favourite video game music examples. And she said she ended up having to kind of rejig the unit of work a little bit so that she could add that into one of the lessons and make time for them to come along and share their favourite uh, video game theme. So I thought that was great. So I've now added that <laughs> into the lesson plan too because, yeah, they're, they're so engaged with that stuff and um, that kind of music is so fabulous. I mean, it's like film scoring music and, you know, these days so many of those video game soundtracks are recorded like film scores. They're full orchestra, um, choirs and so on. They're not sort of just generated by, um, you know, a computer chip anymore, which was the early, early version of video game music. So fabulous area to look at and really good for boys. Yep. Thank you, Barb, said very well done. Thank you. And Michael said, was the session recorded? Yes, Facebook is recording it as we speak. I hope, fingers crossed. And so, yes, as soon as I finish, it will be available on the Midnight Music page and I'll, I'll make sure it gets shared there too. <laughs> Michelle, yep. <laughs> Great. 
Thanks everyone to, for joining me. I will um, sign off now and you know I'll answer some questions. If, if questions come up in the comments after we've signed off live, I'll get back and answer them there. But I hope I'll see some of you on tomorrow where we talk about some more specific lesson ideas and some of my favourite free resources. Thanks everyone. See you later.